<laughs> it is 841. Welcome back. It's a great day for this Friday, 24th of April. And uh, Jonathan Kite is joining us in studio with us. Of course, you see him each and every week on Two Broke Girls. He, you can see him tonight in person Ooh. at the Funny Bone. Two shows tonight, two shows tomorrow. FunnyboneDM.com to get your tickets. That's there right. you go. Before you do anything today, get your tickets. Before you do anything today, get your. they're going to be sold out, funny, so you funny better man. get them. Yeah, before you do anything today. <laughs> Just saying. But we were talking. Talking uh, during the commercial break about if you were in movies or not, you said, "Yeah, you have been in I, movies." Yeah, well, you know, the thing is, I think that's right now. It's great. Television is a great place to be because um, of all the you know cable that's out there and and uh, and internet stuff. Um, th there's a lot of amazing writing, which is we're really in like a, a cool kind of golden age of television at the moment. Um, I, you know, movies are definitely something that I, I'm actually trying to make some films myself. Oh, really? Um, I, I've written a couple scripts and we're trying to put that together, but, you know, as we were talking about d during the break, you have such limited time mm -hmm. when you're doing, um, when you have enough time to shoot an actual film. Because we shoot the year, we get, you know, three weeks on, one week off, and um, usually in the week off I'm doing stand-up somewhere. Sure. And then we do the summer. We, you know, we have a little bit of time, but um, you know, a film, if, especially to be kind of at the helm of something like that, if I wanted to produce it, it takes, it's very involved. It's, so I want to just give myself enough time and I don't feel rushed and tell some stories, but hopefully about Skokie, Illinois. <laughs> We'll see. Yeah, yeah, it works. You have all the fun things in Skokie, Illinois. So, all the fun things. All the fun things. All the good right? bagel places. That's actually true. That's, you think we're really? making this up? Oh yeah, I, that's the <laughs> great bagels, great locks. Mm -hmm. I don't know where they're getting that uh, that fish from. <laughs> it's, it's not, not from, from Michigan. It's not from Michigan. <laughs> Michigan. We know that for a fact. So. <laughs> Flying it in every day. <laughs> I don't know, but it's good. <laughs> well, you've done a, quite a gamut of things, from stage to obviously TV, screen. Is there one project that you really? Uh, hold dear? You know, I think there was probably two things. I think be, being on Two Broke Girls for me is probably, it's it's such an amazing experience because it reminds me of old television shows that I watched when I was growing mm -hmm. up, even in reruns like Taxi and Cheers. Really? And stuff like that. You know, it's, you know, because there's there's a home base that's a diner, like they used to have the taxi stand. Right. And mm -hmm. there's colorful characters. It's very relatable. I mean, I think it does such an amazing job of repping New York City. We have a lot of diversity on the show, which I'm really proud to be a part of. And I believe in the story. I mean, it's, you know, two young girls um, who are putting together a small business which is what America is based on and I think that's a great message for people out there you know um, especially like the economic times that we've had as a country lately that it's like it's it takes two people to you know that old camp game where you sit on each other's back and you push it takes the other person to get up Got and it. so I'm really proud I think the show has a great message and I think the two I really believe in the writing and uh, the comedy and the other thing that I did I was on a, a sketch show that was on Fox um, before that and I got to play an American president in a in a network sketch show, which I grew up watching in Living Color and Saturday Night Live. Sure, yeah. So that was a really, really big deal for me. And I remember thinking, like the night before, because I was going to play Clinton, you know, that that was just that was the dream. If I could go back and tell little me that, man, you're going to do this one day, you're going to get to play an American president on a network sketch show. I think my mind would have been blown. Speaking of that uh, uh, and sketch shows, Garrett Morris, what's it like working with? Oh, him? he, you know, Garrett Morris is one of the most interesting people I've ever met. He has. I always say he has more stories than the Brothers Grimm because he just kind of, you know, well, we all, we eat breakfast in the diner all together and um, he'll just start, you know, talking, like a, a subject will come up and it will remind him of something and you realize that he's talking about his life. You know, he was a, he was a, a, a medic in Vietnam, he was stateside, wow. but I mean, he, he worked in prisons, um, teaching prisoners art, uh, he was involved in very, um, uh, uh, culturally diverse and very strong um, theater projects that were that had um, you know problems with the law that were being shut down for the messages they were trying to put out there wow. I mean he's really been in in the and of course Saturday Night Live I mean well, who could forget yeah. that yeah and, and, and on the first cast in 75 mm -hmm. he's really been at the epicenter of so many amazing cultural things and um, you know I, I told him I think you should put your life I think people would really enjoy a movie or a mini series or something a book based yeah. on his life because I, I think he's one of the most interesting people I've ever met. Mm -hmm. Nice. Have you ever talked to him about where uh, Two Broke Girls fits into his scheme of things when it comes to TV shows, like how, how SNL, when it started, is, does it compare to what Two Broke Girls does? Um, you know, I, it doesn't, you know, I think it's interesting because he's worked for so long. I think he was like 38 when he got Saturday Night Live, mm -hmm. and um, I think he's 
78 now. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, he's at such a different part of his life. Right. I think they've both kind of been especially it feels like they've both been special for him in very different, different ways different roles yeah and to kind of give him an opportunity to kind of um, to show the world different talents that they might not have seen with one True. or the other you know okay. so it's a very it's a very cool position for him to be in and that just shows how multi talented that he is that he's right. so successful yeah. in both nice categories. gig just kind of sit there and give out some great one liners I, it's just great like, I mean yes, <laughs> I used to make a joke that he and I we were so happy and lucky to be a part of the show because they could have given the, we could they could have cast us as Muppets because you didn't see our legs for the it's first true, few seasons. You never did. I know I said I would come in, I would like to in rehearsal, I would joke and I'd be like, pick up <laughs> and I would like run back. Oh, I said, I said, man, I can't wait. I, I said I can't wait for the audience to see my knees. It's kind of like the opposite of Wilson Great from knees. Home Improvement when he, all you saw was like the top of his head, you know. Yeah, the exactly. Yeah, it. It, it's like it's it's kind of like um the, they're getting more. They're like, listen, we're gonna start there and then now it's getting a little bit more liberal so we're getting showing more of the body <laughs> <laughs> showing more they like it let's show, let's show okay. a little bit more come out and see more. this guy's knees now you've been talking impersonations so we got to hear one a little bit earlier Clinton what else who else do you do I do well you know I try to do people that I'd never heard before um, and I you know the cool thing about living in Los Angeles is you get to meet some of these people and I and I what I try to do with my stand-up is to kind of tell that story is my opinions on Hollywood and kind of you know being from the Midwest and having this experience and this exposure so I you know when I was on the network sketch show you just had to learn a bunch of them even if you not necessarily you could or couldn't do them but they're like hey man we wrote this sketch so you've got to do it and so that was kind of crazy and I think that there's a fight-or-flight mentality that you you either learn people or you aren't able to and right. lucky for me it, it just I was able to learn Would you have a switch that turns on when you do an impression well sometimes I mean I think that it's um, it's just so Sort of depends on. Um, I have to like I watch hours of of a certain celebrity, and then like if I hear one word, I go, oh, now I can do it. And sometimes they just take me a lot longer. And, and some of them because I have such a deep voice. Like I used to be able to do Gilbert Godfrey when I was younger, <laughs> but now I just don't. I, I sound like you know G Gilbert Godfrey if he was a chain smoker. Right. <laughs> so it's just it's not you know because he just has an exceptionally high voice. Right. Or somebody yeah. like Russell Brand who I admire and I you know he's he's so great, but he has just a very very high voice for a male so I think like if I can key into something mm -hmm. you know it, it, I can sort of push that boundary and sort of get to those you know points but it, it literally takes a word and sometimes I just have to hear a catalog of them speak you know YouTube clips movies television shows and that whatever. Word's the trigger yeah sometimes it's just like one word and I go oh I got it who, do you, do, you have, who yeah. do you have the most fun with? Yeah. Probably Vince Vaughn, because he's, um, you know, he's from Chicago, mm -hmm. or he's from the Chicagoland area. He uh, he was born in Minnesota, and I actually got to meet him, which was such a cool thing. And um, the, the crazy thing is, like, you never know when you do an impression of somebody if they're going to, you know, th mine comes from love and comes from respect, but, you know, there's certainly impressionists out there where it doesn't come from in terms right. of the people they impersonate. And I did a table read with him, which was really cool, but he came into the table read knowing that one of us did an impression of him. Uh oh. And and he, I, he was very, very generous and very cool and very sweet. But we'd gone through this whole table read and it was a drama, it was this action film. And then at the end of it, um, he went away to the bathroom or something and his producing partner was like, yo, do Vaughn, do Vaughn. And it was like they said Beetlejuice three times. <laughs> He like came around the corner and he was like, ah, uh, yeah, 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 do me. How do I sound? Like, what's the energy? Like, kind of, how do I sound? How do I talk, my man? And I went, and I kind of had a moment of going, well, you know, I, uh, here's, you know, and then I did this thing and I was like, hey, my man, I'm from Illinois. I'm from Skokie, baby. I know you're up from there, my man. We're like from the same area. We get each other right here. We get each other right here because we got that kind of energy, that Midwest stuff. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and then he was so nice and his face went kind of like, and then I and I went no 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 I do other people like I didn't want him to think I was vocally stalking yeah, him yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I only do you man <laughs> um, no I, I did uh, so he was and he was very sweet and that was a that was a really nice moment for me to met somebody um, that I greatly admired and obviously had done an impression off of and I, I would say that that's kind of the impression I'm known for the most because people say they've never have heard of Vince Vaughn impression yeah. right that's I don't not think a I ever typical one yeah. but then when you hear it mm. the bells go off you go yeah, yeah. exactly I listen I, and I watched he did a movie called 
called Fred Claus, where he's just right. screaming at this right. little girl, or he's like putting her in his her place. And I must have seen that movie, I swear, like a hundred times. And I, because I, you know, when you go in, you don't know if you can do them. And I auditioned for this sketch show maybe like six years ago. Okay. And you think you're gonna have plenty of time. So I did like my Branson, Missouri Five. I could do like <laughs> people that weren't necessarily relevant. You know what I mean? Like I did. I could do like Peter Lorre. I could do like. All right, let's hear him. Let's hear him. Yes, I. Oh no, Johnny, I'm not guilty. I, I didn't know she was coming. You have to hide me, Johnny. <laughs> and then I would do. A, um, I would do a Bill Cosby. Oh and, God. Um, it, well, come to the show and you'll see a great Bill Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> that one's not available for television. I promise you. You will see a great one. You're not talking about Jello in that okay, one. Okay. Okay. Right. And then I um, and I do. Uh, I did um, Tim Gunn from Project Runway. Sure. Yeah. So he would say. Um, yeah. Um, this was fabulous. Can I just say something? I like your blouse. Make it work. You are making it work, so thank you. Um, and it's I would the hand and head move. Oh, yeah. yeah. The, you know, he's, he's, so, he's like a, what I said is Tim Gunn, what, he was like an owl. He's like a helpful owl <laughs> from like Sword in the Stone, you know, that yeah, little like right. Archimedes where he's just like, listen, can I just fix this for you? It's like, the, it's good. Good. <laughs> and um, and then uh, I could do, um, I could do, who else? Well, I could do Christopher Walken. And so it's crazy being here. In Iowa, with all the corn, <laughs> it's so much corn. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, and then that was it. So you would go in, and I did those impressions, oh. and then they were like, "Those are great, but can you do anybody who's like?" I mean, obviously, Christopher Walken is always relevant, right? right. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it, but it's like, who can you do that's like we could like you know do a show around? This was before the one that I got, and I was like, ah, uh, I, I think I could do Vince Vaughn, and I I was like Nicolas Cage, or and they're like, great, come back Monday with those. Like, but you think with like when Broke Girls, when two Broke Girls auditioned, we had like two months. Like, you know, they keep bringing you back right. in front of bigger people. Mm -hmm. Wow. This audition was happening within like 48 hours. So I went home in a panic and sat in front of YouTube and I watched Fred Claus. Like, I must have worn out the DVD. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and just being, because I, I wanted to be, I wanted to make good. I knew I could learn it, thinking that if I had a couple weeks mm -hmm. or something, but I had to go in there, I mean, right like, away. Boom. Wow. boom. And it was crazy. And I remember, and I think I might have even done Obama or something for the, because I, I did like a thing, you have a Cubs uh, foam finger there, but yeah. I did, because I, um, I used to work at Wrigley Field. Okay. okay. And I sold hot dogs this summer that, uh, that uh, Sosa and McGuire were going for it. Oh, oh cool. that's great. Yeah, which yeah. was awesome. Yeah. That was so much fun. But um, I did, I think, like um, Obama and, uh, and Vince Vaughn supporting the Cubs. Like, I think that was like, <laughs> As a matter of fact, he's going to do Vince and Obama supporting the Cubs when we come back. We'll be right back. There you go. Actually, we'll be right back. At, where's the um, Christopher Walken? We'll be back after more cowbell. Guys, we're going to have more of this in a bit. <laughs>